Okay, next one. Does the inverse cosine of cosine pi over 3 equal pi over 3? So this one is another one. Uh, again, it's, it's either going to equal pi over 3 or if it doesn't, then we've got to find the exact value that's associated with it. So if I look at the inverse cosine on the outside, that says that I can cancel it out and it's going to equal x, but that's only if my x is between 0 and pi. Well, in this case, the pi over 3, that is a number, a number between 0 and pi. That does work. So because of that, I would say yes on this one. The exact value of this would actually be pi over 3, and you don't have to go through all that reference angle stuff that we did before for the previous problem because this, this one actually works. The only time you ever have to do the extra work uh, is if you can't apply this property to it. Now this it really only applies if you've got the inverse cosine or the inverse trig function on the outside, that's when you may or may not have to find the exact value. The other ones we did previously, if you got the inverse on the inside, that just goes back to the regular domain. And so that one, if it doesn't fit the domain of the inverse, then definitely you can't do it and that would be the end of the problem. However, for these here with the inverses on the outside, you, it's either going to equal the number on the inside, or if not, then we have to go through the reference angle steps in order to get the answer. Okay, for this one, does inverse tan of tan 11 pi over 6 equal 11 pi over 6? Okay, so the inverse tan of tan, that's this one right here, and it says that this is true only if the value, the, this angle here, 11 pi over 6, is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Well, definitely 11 pi over 6, that's more than a half. So, so this, uh, does that equal uh, no? You'd say no for that, not equal to 11 pi over 6. Okay, so I'm, unfortunately I'm not able to use this property and cancel it out and get the answer and that's it. So because of that, unfortunately because I can't do that, now I have to go about it the other way. I have to find the exact value by using reference angles. So I want to first find the value of tangent 11 pi over 6. That's what I want to do. So in order to do that, I got to find out the what the value of tangent 11 pi over 6 is, and then I'll take the inverse of that uh, particular value. So here's how we're going to do it. Again, we got to go through the three-step process for finding the reference angle. 11 pi over 6, that angle, if you were to graph it, that ends up in the fourth quadrant. It's, just, it's slightly less than 2 pi, which means that it would be in the fourth quadrant. The fourth quadrant means that the, the RA, the reference angle, is equal to 2 pi minus 11 pi over 6. So I want to do this part first in order to get the reference angle. And if I were to subtract those, the common denominators, I would get pi over 6. So pi over 6 would be my reference angle. That's the answer for step 1. Step 2 of finding the exact value would be apply the trig function to the reference angle. So I want to do tangent pi over 6. So tangent pi over 6, if I get that value from my table, uh, tan of 30 degrees or pi over 6, that's square root of 3 over 3. So that, that's answering step number 2. Number 3 means that we've got to apply the appropriate sign by using the all students take calculus sign chart. So in this case, you're looking for the uh, where for for this we have to see whether that tangent value is positive or, or negative. So it's going to have the same value as square root of three over three, but I want to tell whether it's positive or negative. So if I do the do that over here, all we said we're in the fourth quarter. All students take uh, tangents positive, everything else is negative, and then this right here calculus. So we're in the fourth quadrant. Cal cosine is positive, everything else is going to be negative. So that means that this has to have a negative sign value attached to it. So that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. That's going to be the exact value. So now what I want to do is I want to find the inverse tangent, inverse tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3. Now let's take a look at the angle that we have associated with that. Right here, this angle right here, that's actually going to be our reference angle, but it's going negative instead of going positive. So normally I have 11 pi over 6. But my angle originally was around here, 11 pi over 6 would be put down here in the fourth quadrant. So that my angle, this right here is negative uh, pi over 6. So the tangent value up here would be positive, but then down here it's going to be negative. So basically what I want to tell is it's saying what angle uh, is associated with this. One angle will give me a negative square root of 3 over 3. Well, that's actually this angle right here, it would be negative pi over 6. Now normally, I would just put 11 pi over 6 as the answer. However, 
when we look at this, this part, the angle that you get, the x value has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I need to write, an, my answer has to be an angle between ne negative pi over pi over 2 in order for that to work. So this right here is actually going to be equal to negative pi over 6 would be the answer. So again, how I got that was negative square root of 3 over 3 means if I look at pictorially, that's this value right here down below. At, uh, at 11 pi over 6 around to here, I got that value. I want to find out well, what's the same way I can get to the same angle going, at, going to it by a negative angle. And that would actually be this, negative pi over 6. So that's how I get that answer. So negative 11 pi over 6 would be the exact value for this one. It's not equal to 11 pi over 6 because this is not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2.